Now, I have to talk about Jacinta Nampajipa Price, the hero of the No campaign and our woke elite's worst nightmare. Four years ago, before she was famous, I went and heard her speak at the Princess Theatre in Brisbane. What I'm about to tell you are the things I learned that night and I wrote them down at the time in a blog post. Nampajipa Price's maternal grandparents were adolescents when they first saw white people. Despite being among the last of the nomads of Central Australia, they refused to see themselves as victims and taught Jacinta the same. Her mother Bess, who became a country Liberal Party member of the Northern Territory Parliament, was to be the second wife of her sister's husband in an arranged marriage under Aboriginal culture. She refused, climbed a tree and was eventually allowed to marry for love. Price grew up in the top end and now lives in Alice Springs where she became a town councillor, deputy mayor and represents the Northern Territory in the Australian Senate. Not all of her people appreciate her advocacy. Her crime is that she does not toe the political collect she does not toe the politically correct lines of indigenous of the indigenous industry. She calls out abuses in Aboriginal culture, particularly the abuse of women and girls, and she does not believe welcome to country ceremonies are necessary because most tribes never practice them. Her voice is unique because unlike most Indigenous voices we hear on the ABC, she doesn't believe an Indigenous voice to Parliament is necessary and calls on her people to take personal responsibility for the dysfunction that is racking their communities. She doesn't blame colonial Australia, Captain Cook, white privilege or the Australian government for the ills of her people. I was never hindered because I am Indigenous. In fact, many opportunities came my way because I was Indigenous, she said. Her views, uh, not to, uh, her views should not be mistaken for indifference to Indigenous suffering. She cares more than most and has seen firsthand the alcohol and drug fueled violence against and sexual, sexual abuse of Indigenous women. She has seen too many people uh, of her of her people, of her family, poison themselves to death from alcohol consumption. Her description of the murder of an, an Indigenous woman in Alice Springs, in an Alice Springs town camp, was harrowing. Because drunks often attacked ambulance officers, first aid was not rendered to this woman. The woman drowned in her own blood. The man who did it was sentenced to just nine years and is now out of prison. This was typical of the stories she told that night four years ago. Jacinta Price uh, rattled off several other heartbreaking stories of family dysfunction and violence. We don't have a Me Too movement for Aboriginal women, she lamented. Violence and violence against women, she said, has always been part of Aboriginal culture in the same way it has been permissible and is making a resurgence, sadly, in white culture. Lenient sentences were only making violence against women worse because men knew they would only get a slap on the wrist. Listen to these words spoken by Price four years ago before she got into Parliament. The greatest reason Aboriginal men are incarcerated is because of violent acts against loved ones. Incarceration does deter crime. High recidivism comes from shorter sentences. If we want to see rates of incarceration drop, we have to tackle family and, family and the family violence epidemic." End quote. She described how traditional Aboriginal culture stipulated that men cut themselves upon the death of a clan member and then fill the wound with ash to accentuate the scar. In a similar way, women were expected to bash their head with a rock until blood gushed, also in respect for the dead. Quote, we have decided there are some aspects of our culture that don't work for us anymore, end quote, she said back that night in 2019. She is clearly proud of the many positive aspects of Aboriginal culture, but says it is time to stop romanticising all of it. Polygamy was co a common practice and arranged marriages still occur. I speak out against these practices because they deny the rights of young women, Jacinta Price said. Her grandfather narrowly missed being killed in the last sanctioned frontier massacre of Aboriginals, the Coniston Massacre in 1928, when around 100 blacks were killed by whites. In 1942, her grandfather and some of his kinsmen were rounded up because they were spearing goats, and they were made to work for the army as part of the war effort. They were paid five shillings per week in comparison with the white workers who were paid five pounds per week. The discrimination 
did not worry her grandfather. Quote, he and his kinsmen felt like they had been part of nation building, end quote, Price said. Her grandfather would move in and out of white and black society, coming in for periods of employment and then going back on country. At the point where Price explained why she doesn't engage with welcome to country, yelling, screaming, swearing emanated from the balcony of the Princess Theatre. A man, whiter than me, was gesticulating and yelling at Price for several minutes. Now, in a dignified manner, she left the stage while security and police took about 10 minutes to restore order. Yet again, we were watching how the left does debate. Well, actually, it doesn't do debate. It just tries to silence those with whom it disagrees. Now, finally, Jacinta Nampajimpa Price returned to the stage, clearly unaffected by the violent verbal attacks on her. Bullies will be bullies, and I won't be bullied. My grandparents taught me never to be anyone's victim, she said. Price finished her talk on her uh, by talking about her pathways out of despair. And these are forgiveness will lead to reconciliation, education as a priority, but not driven by ideology. She was scathing of the gender fluid crap, as she put it. No more romanticizing culture, take responsibility, uphold the human rights of women and children. We all are humans. Real equality means black and white being part of the same fabric of the nation. Uh, now, this was four years ago, um, and this explains why she's so against a race-based voice to parliament that entrenches this victim mindset in Indigenous people. Price made it clear that night that she supports recognition of Indigenous people in the constitution, something we all do, but not the proposed voice to parliament. There is a lot of goodwill from the wider Australian population towards Indigenous people. They just want to do things in more practical terms, she said. Price believes the key to Indigenous reconciliation with white Australia is forgiveness. She said plenty of white people came to Australia as convicts dispossessed of their land during the colonial period. Most people were getting a rough time in those days. We've had sorry day, let's have forgiveness day, she said. Now, after speaking for more than an hour and a half, the full theatre of quiet Australians rose to their feet and gave her a rousing standing ovation. Three years later, she was elected to the parliament. Cometh the hour, came the woman. Where would we have been without her?